Hello, this lesson is on solving radical equations. Much like absolute value equations, the first thing you want to do is isolate the radical, and that means get a line on, on one side. Now, then you're going to raise each side of the equation, not each term to the same power, and then you're going to solve for x, and then for radical equations, you're going to have to check for extraneous solutions. So let's start with example one. Over here, you have five times, so the operation in between the number and the square root is always times. Five times the square root of x minus 2 equals 25. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to need to do is isolate the radical. That means undo this five times by dividing both sides by 5. That's going to give you the square root of x minus 2 equals 5. Okay, now the second thing that you're going to do for this problem is you have to undo the square root. This is an operation as well, and the opposite of squaring uh, the square root of something, there's an understood index of 2 here, is to square it. And the opposite of undoing the cube root is to cube it. So if I want to undo the square root, I'm going to square this side. Well, golden rule of algebra still is um, very important, so if I square one side, I have to square the other side. So over here, the square root of x minus 2 squared, well, the square root and the square, they cancel each other out, and it just leaves you with x minus 2, and 5 squared is 25. So then the next step is to just solve for x, so we'll add 2 to both sides and get x is equal to 27. Then this, now we arrive at step 4. You have to check for extraneous solutions. What that means is you just have to check this x value, this answer, um, by plugging it in to either the original or where you isolated. Um, so I'll do the original just to make sure we don't misunderstand what I'm saying. So 5 times the square root of x minus 2. Well, we found out x is 27. So 5 times the square root of 27 minus 2 is supposed to equal 25. So we have 5 times the square root of 25, and that's 5 times 5, and that does equal 25. Now once you get good at this, you will probably start to uh, suspect when you might have an extraneous solution, so I'm not surprised that this, this works. It's, it's more common than not that it will work. Okay, so you may want to pause the video and see if you can do no, this next one, number 2. Even though there's fractions, we have a calculator to handle that. So we're going to divide both sides by 5 so we can isolate the absolute value. The square root of 16x equals 64 fifths. There's no need to simplify that yet. Um, and then the square root, to, un to undo that, we're going to square both sides. So that gives us 16x. The square root and the square cancel out. Uh, 16x equals, this is where the calculator comes in, 60, and you can put it in like this, um, parentheses 64 over 5, quantity squared, and what's going to happen is that square is going to go to both the numerator and the denominator, and that gives me 4,096 over 25. Okay, and then to get rid of 16 times, remember 16 over 1, you can divide that by 16 or you can multiply by the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of 4, 000, of, of 16 is 1 over 16. That cancels out to 1. And so now I can just take that answer and multiply it times 1 16. And that gives me 10.24 or 256 over 25. And again, we will check for extraneous solutions, so I'm going to do that. So 5 square root of 16 times 256 over 25 is supposed to equal 64. So we'll just put all that in the calculator. So 5 square root of 16 times 256 divided by 25. Get 
out and hit enter and you get 64. So that answer is also correct. So example one and two are a certain type of example where there's only one X underneath the radical and nothing strange is happening. But here's where it starts to get interesting. Here you have a, a square root of three X plus one on the right and an X minus three on the left. So there's an inside X and there's an outside X and that's gonna draw attention to rule two over here, or step two. All right, so let me go through how to do this. So the first thing you wanna do is isolate the radical. So we'll, it's, it's already by itself. There's nothing over here. So if that put had a plus three here, you have to move that plus three over to the other side. Okay, the second thing is you want to get rid of this square root, right? So even though it's on the right, that's the first thing you wanna do. And you wanna square that side and you wanna square that side. So you have to put parentheses around the entire, the beginning of the side, and at the end and square it. And this is where mistakes can happen. So this is what I have written here. Remember that when you have a binomial quantity squared, it doesn't equal a squared plus b squared. So you can't just distribute that exponent to the two and the, and the three. It's not a squared plus b squared. Remember my shortcut, you're gonna square double squared. That means you, you need to multiply x minus three squared is x minus three times x minus three. So you need to multiply that out. So you can do it the long way. That'd be x squared minus three x minus three x plus nine, but and then add like terms, but I like to do square double square. This is true every time. So you take that x, you square it, you multiply that x and minus three together, that's negative three x, but you're always gonna have two of them. So you double that and it's minus six x. And then you square that negative three and that's positive nine. And then over here, when you square that radical, that radical just cancels out with the square, you get three X plus one. See, so now instead of a linear equation, we end up with a quadratic equation. So we have to remember how to solve quadratic equations. So you have to set this equal to zero by moving this three X over and this one over. Okay. so minus three X, minus three X, minus one, minus one. That's gonna give me X squared minus nine X plus eight equals zero. And then you're gonna factor. So the factors of eight that add up to be nine are eight and one. And you want them to add up to be a negative nine. So X minus eight times X minus one equals zero. So then you solve it. You set each of these linear factors equal to zero, and you get x equals eight and x equals one. Okay, so now I'm going to check for extraneous solutions. I have two possible solutions, and so I have to plug each of them in to the original. So that was eight minus three equals the square root of three times eight plus one. 8 minus 3 is 5. The square root of 3 times 8 is 24 plus 1 is 25. And the square root of 25 is 5. So that works. So 8 is definitely a solution. Now hang in here with me now because now we're going to try 1 and watch what will happen. So if I put 1 in and check it, you have 1 minus 3 equals the square root of 3 times 1 plus 1. And one minus three is negative two. And three times one is three plus one is four. So we have the square root of four. Now here's where it gets interesting. This radical was given to us at the beginning. So this is known as the principal square root. It's not plus or minus, it's just the square root of four. And the square root of four is just two. Okay, when you take the square root, you have to think plus and minus. So this does not, this is not a true statement. Negative two does not equal two. And so this x equals one is not a solution. It's called an extraneous or extra or um, it's a value for x that does not make this beginning statement true. Now it makes the quadratic true. 
but it doesn't make the radical equation true. So that's often going to happen when you end up with an example where you end up with a solving a quadratic. Now, it's not always going to happen. Um, what, so what, what happened was, if I were to graph this, something like this just happened. So a radical, the right side looks something like maybe uh, this. And then x minus 3, that looks something like uh, maybe like that. All right, and so it, it, the intersection is just x equal 8. Um, so this radical only has this upper branch here. It doesn't have the bottom branch, and so a lot of times it'll just be one solution. Um, it could have two. I mean, there's a way we could get two solutions. It could also be no solution. So when you have radical equations, you might have one solution, you might have two solutions, you might have no solution. Um, but once you solve for x, you check your answers against the original to see what's really a solution. Okay, so that's what's going on with number four. Okay, let's try um, number four here. So here it says square root of x plus 14 minus 2 equals x. Well, remember step one, you have to isolate the radical. Okay, so you're going to have to move this minus 2 over first. So step one, we have to make sure we isolate the radical, get it all alone on one side. Okay, step two, we're going to square both sides. Okay, the square root of x plus 14 squared is just x plus 14, and you have to multiply out x plus 2 squared. I'm going to square double square, so that would be x squared, and then x times 2 is 2x, double that, that's 4x, and then square the 2, and that's positive 4. So now we have a quadratic, so we're going to set it equal to 0, so that's x squared. That x becomes a minus x, that's 3x. That plus 14 becomes a minus 14 on the right, so that's minus 10. So we're going to solve that quadratic by factoring. If it factors, it's going to factor into two binomials. The factors of 10, 1 times 10, 2 times 5. That subtract to be 3 or 2 and 5. So x plus 5, x minus 2. Then you solve each linear factor by setting each of them equal to 0 and you get x equals negative 5, or x equals 2. Okay, now, because it's a radical equation, you have to check for extraneous solutions, so you're going to put it in the original, or you can put it in after you've isolated, but I'll put it in the original. Um, square root of negative 5 plus 14 minus 2 should equal negative 5. So negative 5 plus 14, that's 9. The square root of 9 minus 2 should equal negative 5. The square root of 9 is 3. 3 minus 2 does not equal negative 5. So x equals negative 5 is not a solution. We call it an extraneous solution. x equal 2. Remember, you could have no solution, so we need to check it. So square root of 2 plus 14 minus 2 equals 2. That's the square root of 16 minus 2 equals 2. That's 4 minus 2 equals 2. That's true. So x equals 2 is your solution. Okay, example 5. Take a look at it. So we have the square root here, and it's being multiplied by negative 3, and it's being plus 8. So again, just like absolute value, you want to think of it as if you saw this. Negative 3 times the radical plus 8 equals negative 7. How would you isolate the radical? How would you get r by itself? Well, you would subtract 8 first, right? So that's what we're going to do here. So negative 3 times the square root of 2x plus 5 is equal to negative 15. Okay, and then you're going to divide both sides by negative 3. And so the square root of 2x plus 5 is equal to 5. So 
That's step one. We isolated the radical. It took two steps to do that because we have a two-step equation. All right, now we're going to square both sides. And that gives us 2x plus 5 equals 25. So 2x equals 20. So x is equal to 10. All right, so let's check our work here. So negative 3 times the square root of 2 times 10 plus 5 plus 8 should equal negative 7. So negative 3 times the square root of 25 plus 8. And that's negative 3 times 5 plus 8. And that's negative 7. So that works out. All right. I think you should pause the video and try 6 and 7 and come back and check. So pause it now. All right, let me go through this quickly because you should just be checking your work. First step, isolate the radical. It's already isolated. Square both sides. That gives me not x squared plus 9. That gives me x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals 30 minus 2x. We get a quadratic. Got to get it set equal to zero. That should be x squared minus 4x minus 9 minus 30 is minus 21 equals zero. And we factor. That's x minus 7, x plus 3. Then we solve. That's x equals 7, x equals negative 3. Then you have to check for extraneous solutions. So 7 minus 3 should equal the square root of 30 minus 2 times 7. 4 is equal to the square root of 30 minus 14, uh, which is 16. 4 equals 4. So 7 works. Don't assume that's only going to be the answer. It's possible to have two solutions. So now we'll try negative 3. So negative 3 minus 3 equals the square root of 30 minus 2 times negative 3. See this radical right here that I did not take, it was there. That means the positive root, so I know this isn't going to work, but negative, so we'll go through with it. Negative 6 equals the square root of 30 plus 6, 36. So negative 6 does not equal 6, so that is extraneous. Did you get it? X equals 7. All right, so number 8, did you isolate the radical? So did you move this X over here with this positive 8 to get negative X plus 8? Then square both sides, and that square double square, that should give you positive X squared minus 16X plus 64 equals X plus 2. And then setting it equal to 0 gives you x squared minus 17x plus 52 equals 0. Well, 52, you have to find the factors of that. I had to use my calculator because I don't know all of them. So I know 1 and 52, and I know it ends in 2, so 2 and 26. Here's a little trick. 26, I know 2 goes into that. So if 2 goes into it and another 2 goes into it, that means that 4 goes into it. So 4 times 13 adds up to be 17. So x minus 13, x minus 4 equals 0. I got x is 13 and x is 4. And when I check my work, I got that x is extra uh, 13 is extraneous because 8 does not equal 18. But 4 works. So x equals 4 is your solution to that one. Okay, and the last one is um, just... Quickly, what happens if you don't have a square root? You have an index that other than 2. Like if you had a cube root, well, you would just isolate the radical like normal, and then you would cube both sides. So whatever index there is, you would raise it to that power. So in this case, we're going to cube both sides. That gives me x minus 5 equals 2 cubed, which is 8. And then we're going to add um, 5 to both sides to get x is 13. And then if you check your work, you get the cube root of 13 minus 5 is supposed to equal 2, and the cube root of 8 does equal 2. So that's what you do if you have an index other than a 2 there. 
Okay, practice all the ones on the um, page and check your answers.